quite sad to leave the nest. Camp pretty well sorted. We've had our lunch. Dane's got his hammock up there. Pretty cool spot. He's got to climb up there off that post. And I'm high up in the trees over here. And I just got to climb up off this old hibiscus here to get up in there. Such a good little camp. Got some firewood for tonight. We've got full bellies. Belly. Now we're gonna chase muddies. G'day guys. Um, sorry to interrupt your episode, but something I wanted to share with you all. Uh, over on our Patreon community, uh, we do these giveaways every month, like really cool giveaways. And Western Four Wheel Drive and Outdoors have donated a drifter awning. All right. So in the last uh, video call that we did, we um, did the prize draw and. Two of our Patreons, a couple, Tom and Shana, have won the awning and instead of getting it couriered up to them, I've told them it's coming with Star Trek, but I thought that I'd drive, it's a couple of hours up the coast from where I live, my son Opie and I thought we'd drive it up to them and, and hand deliver it to them and then sort of make, you know, make the most of the trip and go and camp for a couple of nights out bush somewhere, so we're doing that now, we're nearly, nearly at our destination and um, hopefully we can get a a good reaction out of Shana. All right, we are just around the corner, so I'm going to move the camera over to the side so you guys can see, hopefully, the reaction. I'm actually really nervous. Are you looking at the numbers? That one? This one, there they are. What do you mean there they are? This is the house here. Do they know that whip? Giving it to them. Do that. What the hell is that? Couldn't play. Probably. Oh, hey. That's really quite nice here, isn't it? Hey, mate. How are you? I've got a delivery for you. Yep. You and your parents. Are you the? You do Taekwondo, do you? Is that you? Yeah. Come on, mate. Hey guys! No way! <laughs> oh, this is awesome! How you going? Yeah, good. Good. How are you, mate? Good. Were you a bit suspicious? Or you... I was like, this is, yeah, weird about the post because, yeah, it just didn't add up. And I was like, okay, maybe he's got some connection with the. Because I was like, yeah, I don't know. No, we just thought. Did you drive all the way up from. Yeah. Yeah, we thought, like, your reaction was so good on the, on the video call, and you were like jumping up and down saying, I'm ready to post this. I was like, oh, we've got to go up there and see this in person. Oh, that's amazing. Well, we're going to go for a camp, so we thought... Where are you going? Get on How cool is that? So hopefully we captured a little bit of that with the GoPros. I had the GoPro running out the window, but I don't know what I captured. Um, but how rewarding. And to, and to rock up, and Tom's there wearing the Wild Reaches shirt. It was awesome. But yeah, so rewarding to be able to, to, be able to do that. Um, so big thanks to Western 4x4 and Outdoors. Uh, and to Drifter for the awning, uh, allowing me to do things like this for our Patreon community is really cool. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, patreon.com forward slash wild reaches. Uh, oh, and then they've just, so Tom and Shana put us in the direction of a good camp spot for the night. And seeing as though it's quarter past five, I knew we weren't going to catch dinner in a new river system that I've got no idea about. So they also put us onto a fish and chip shop. So I've got some fresh barra, fresh coral trout, and some hot chips. And hopefully this is going to be a good camp. I might show you guys when we get there. But I'll let you guys get back to the episode. And I'll see you all soon. Look at the foam out there. Yeah. It's massive. It's a big bit. What a cool river, eh? Yeah. So we're thinking we got about 
an hour or so until the tide turns and that's when we want to be fishing again. So we're going to go chase these mud crabs. Hopefully we can pull a buck or two out of there. Dane's just going to grab a few things from the boat. We've got about four litres of water left. We're hoping to leave tomorrow to go up the coast, back towards the land cruises where we can get more water. But it's not a good feeling because if something goes wrong, something goes wrong with the boat, anything like that, we've got no water, no fresh water. You have to get pretty creative. As you can see here, we're pretty well trapped in here now. If you look out there, that's the bar. It's this low tide. You can see the pelicans out there working the little, the shallows, but with this low tide, there's no going anywhere. We're stuck in here now until the tide gets high again, which is gonna be three o'clock in the morning. Which we, at three o'clock in the morning, we'd be able to get out, but hopefully by, I don't know, I wanna fish in here tomorrow morning, but Hopefully we can have a bit of a fish and then still be able to get out and get down the... Actually, we will, we will be able to because we got in here today at about 10 o'clock. So we'll still be able to get out through the mouth about 10 o'clock tomorrow and start going north. <laughs> We're going to need a shovel for that one. Holy dooly. That's not even a big hole. I suppose you to start anywhere, there's so many holes. There's literally, I don't know, 100 holes here or more. So I'll prop you guys up and we'll just start poking around trying to find one. Start digging, boy. Hopefully it's not a jenny. dig a hole but I've got to film you. Hopefully we get a couple. The problem is they could be jennies. I don't know if we said that earlier but we did. The one that we picked up was a jenny. In Queensland you're not allowed to keep your female with mud crabs. I can sense it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Big Jenny, if it is one. Jenny. Oh no. It's a big Jenny though. It is. You can see by the claws, they're much smaller, eh? Yeah. Well, we're not eating her. One from one. Oh dear. This could be the jetty patch. It's over to this corner here. I don't know. 
It's Jenny, hey. Really? It's only small. You imagine that thing got your finger. That is locked on there. Locked on. Jenny, hey. Yeah. She's this whole flat might be just Jenny's. How are you going, mate? Yeah, I'll come over. That's pretty odd. Three Jennies. I don't know, I've still got to hope. Are you close? So a couple episodes back, Dane and I went for a walk down along the beach at the last river system we were exploring and um, there was like a tidal lagoon. We went for a walk in it and we found three jennies out the front, no bucks, and they were just swimming around in the shallows, which has got us thinking this system could be the same. This is where the jennies live out the front. The bucks are all way up the system doing something else. I still hope it could be a buck in here somewhere. Might be a Jenny and a buck in there. Ooh, have a night. Have a dinner together. Another Jenny. Be it guys. It's just hard muddy work just to keep pulling out jennies. I think we'll try and have a bit of a wash in the river. That tide's probably about to turn. I think it might have turned actually. Look at this little guy. Little hermit crab. He's so cool, he's coming right out. Croc, across the road, where the bird is. Oh yeah, little crocodile over there guys, see that? He's in the water. He's probably that small fella we saw in the drain when we came in. But yeah, this is what you gotta do when you come to spots like this. When you get to the water's edge, you need to be aware of your surroundings, look for croc slides, look at the size of the croc slides, just to see where they're moving. And I dare say a big deep hole like this one where we've got the boat, there could be a big boy. Alright, we're back on the water for an Arvo sesh. No real plans, but the mouth is looking pretty good. I reckon when the tide comes in, we're thinking there'll be a bit of a back eddy, which could hold barra. Probably small barra, but we're saying it's still fun on plastics. Um, we're thinking, because we've got our cart set on the big mud crab, we might go for a quick run up the river. Let's look for a, um, a bigger hole. Don't waste too much time doing it. Come back to the mouth, fish the mouth, go back upstream fish some um, high tide snags. Hopefully we got time. We've about two hours till dark. But we got the fire going back at camp, prepped, because we're gonna cook a whole barra tonight. We're gonna be a treat to show you guys. Let's look at that big sucker first, I'm too excited. Did you find that one? Yeah? Yeah, I saw it Oh, oh they're everywhere.
Yeah, only we could eat the jennies, eh? Just slow down a little. I'll get a good side on them before they move. Oh, what about up the top there? Maybe. Fresh mud out the front of it. You ready? Or reverse? Yep. Baking himself. Oh, it's a Jenny. The river of Jennies. That's insane. Amazing, hey. Just gotta go slow and Yeah, like, good spotting bro. Check it out. I just saw that little disc. Bloody Jennies. Oh, they just be getting that warm, hey? Yeah. Someone messaged me the other day on Instagram or YouTube or something and said, said, why don't you guys take grab pots with you? because this stuff's way too much fun. It's all about earning your food. Huh? It's all about earning your food, I reckon. Pots are just too easy. Ah. show you the mud crab hole and I caught a fish. Or maybe you found me. Oh, oh my god, it's the cutest little jew fish I've ever seen. Wow. Wow. Look how cute he is. Oh, poor little fella. He's getting back in the drink. Cool is that drone footage, seeing those jabberoos way up the drain there. Dane's just gone for a walk up there now and I thought I'd have a flip while well, he's gone for a walk. And the bloody stingray, do you see the stingray on the bank here just lunging up and I don't know what he was getting, mud skippers or something? I've never seen that in my life. That was unreal, I can't wait to look back over the footage and check it out. 
So this drain does a huge big loop. I think I told you guys that this morning when I was looking at the drone, like when I flew the drone this morning, there's a huge big loop and I'm thinking tomorrow morning the tide should be quite a bit higher and we might get this drain running off, like proper running off, which would be really good. Um, now, while Dane's up there walking, this tide is pretty much stopped and the black dewfish that we were catching here earlier, even though they're only small, I'm hoping we might get a big one because the black dewfish tend to bite when there's no run. And at the moment, it's dead. I mean, 4.7 metres of water. Just bouncing a vibe off the bottom. And he's back. Waiting for a ride. Right, go. Day, done and dusted. Time for a big cook up. I think it's about eight o'clock, you reckon? 20 to eight. Um, we were going to cook a whole barrel, but we just got pretty lazy and we had leftover fish from lunch there. Um, that pomfrit, 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 I think it's called, the batfish. Absolutely delicious. So we just finished off that fish and um, we're going to save the barrel for a cook up tomorrow so that we can show you guys with some proper light. But I'm down here, I can't see anything, this light's so bright in my eyes. I'm down here on the side of the river because that tide's starting, just starting to come around the point a lot later than I thought it would be. Um, and we were just down on the edge of the, of the water here. There's so many shells and we found some fossilised crabs. Dane's got another one, I might show you quickly. I was going to show you guys in the morning. Fossilised wood, yeah, like really cool stuff that we've never found before. Just careful close to that. Oh no, he's still pretty far back there. Oh, this one too. Oh, that's a sick one. Yeah, it's good, eh? Get it up close, show him. Look at this. How cool. I'll adjust the camera. How cool is that? And look, this is, this is fossilized wood, listen. Wow. <laughs> that looks like just like <laughs> rotten timber. It's rock hard. How crazy, man. This place, is, this place look, is so look, strange. Look in there, it's all shiny. I don't know, I don't know why this place exists. If you guys know, if you guys know more about this stuff, I reckon Dane's more excited now than he was with a mud shell. It's really cool. We'll have a bit more of a look tomorrow with a bit more light. It was dark when we found it with our head torches. But the reason we're here is because the tide's starting to push out around this point. I lost my cup of tea. Um, and I'm assuming the big barrel are going to start biting pretty soon so we're going to tie some plastics on, have a few casts and I'll get the camera back out if we catch anything. Oh, where's my cuppa? Alright I give up. I don't know what the time is but I've thrown about a thousand casts. Ended up flicking this huge big popper about. I can hear the barrow buffing out there but I couldn't get a bite. So disappointing, but I'm going to bed. I'm absolutely exhausted. See you guys in the morning. We've just come back up to camp here to climb up into the hammocks. We've thrown another log on the fire there because there's a croc hanging around down the front here. I'll just put my light on. See his eyes there? Can you guys see that? He was hanging around while we were fishing down the point as we're walking back he was just slowly drifting down towards us now he's actually come back up right in front of our camp and he's just sitting there the tide's coming in so 
He's going to be quite close to camp pretty soon, or in a few hours. There's not much we can do now. Just got to get up high in the trees. I wish I'd made it a bit high now. We probably should have built the platform that we had at the last river. Oh no, I should be right. That's me up there. By the time I get in... Oh yeah, I'll be okay. I'm six foot up in the trees. So is Dane. We're both about six foot up. I'll try and keep this thing going for a couple of hours. He's just hanging around at camp. Straight out the front of the camp there, mate. Is he? He's spun around and come back. And he's just hanging there. See him there? He's right where we had a wash this afternoon. Oh, is he? Yeah, in that little pool. Is that a little hay? I think so. A little inquisitive croc. All right, we're gonna go to bed. See you guys in the morning. Morning guys, we're up on the river a little bit earlier this morning. We wanted to get up into this creek system that does that big loop and um, it's a high tide this morning so we're able to just get up in here in a metre and a half of water. So we're trying to find this channel. We've got a limited time to fish this morning and then we need to use this tide, this higher tide to get back up the coast to the land cruises while we still can. But we want to have a fish nice and early. It's so beautiful on the river this time of morning. It's so still. So yeah, hopefully we've got time that 
It is running out, so that was like the tide's running out. Hopefully we got time to fish the other end of this big loop where it drains off the flats into the main channel. See if we can chase some barra around and then go back, pack up camp, pack up the hammocks and head back up to the land cruisers. It is, it's like 70. Yes. Oh. Oh. Leave those trebles in, mate. Oh, it's a decent one, mate. Beauty, that did. It's <laughs> very shallow there, you can see the bottom. Is it? Mm. Oh, not bad for the first fish in the morning, though. I reckon he's nearly ready. I might bring him around one more. Oh, oh. oh, oh no. mate. Yeah, he's nearly ready. Yeah. Yeah! 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 Big bar, son. Oh, Big bar. Look at that. <laughs> We've done it. we got a big girl. She's done a treble. She's torn it. That's the problem with these, these little comics and twitches. They're brilliant lures. But the, uh, see, look, that's it there. Yeah. Brilliant lures. But like the trebles and the split rings, like Dane keeps saying, if you're going to be chasing big fish, you need to replace them. Oh, it's got a beauty. Oh. Yes. 88. 88. That is the biggest for the trip. Biggest for the trip. Oh, mate. How good's that? Wrapped. Oh, last day. Wrapped with that. I can even chase a few more along these flats, hey? Yeah. This is what we come up here for, guys. Big fish like this. We've done the kilometres. We've done the kilometres in the cars, in the boats. We've suffered, as Dane says. You've got to suffer to get them. And it's paying off right now. I'm bloody stoked. They're going to love that. <laughs> Absolutely stoked. Yeah, I think we'll keep this for the TOs, eh? <clears throat> I think so. They'll froth. Yeah, because we're going back today to them so we can keep it whole. Hang on. I've got to say this. Now, normally... Yes, as you guys know, we don't keep fish of this size. They go back in a drink. We normally keep like a 60 or 70 meter bar to eat that day. We've got so much respect for these big girls. I just love chasing them. I love the hunt. But we've been welcomed into this land by the traditional owners. And they've given us permission to really explore it. And we feel so grateful. So we want to take them back a, like a token of our appreciation. And this big girl's going to be it. It's so good. Nice. Yeah, doggy. Look at that. Trebles are buggered on that one. Do you want him or just pull him in? Oh, he's tall. Slim twitcher. The pink slim twitcher, eh? Yeah. Dane's got one. Got a little bar. Just and measured him. Just off camera. Called 53. Put him on the mat. Oh, not bad. And bang on. 53 and a half. You wouldn't be a chippy, would you? Oh, not a good one. <laughs> Alright, he's not legal. Let's chuck him back. Alright, back in the drink. See you, bud. Uh, I think it's time to go back to camp, pack up camp. Hopefully the sat phone will be charged by then and we can make the call from there at the mouth and then start shooting up the coast um, and get into this next system. That's the other battle, in through the mouth there. We should be all right with this tide.
All right, we got 25 liters to get home, which is sweet because it took us 25 to get right down the coast. So we should be laughing to feel. The sat phone won't turn on, so we can't make the call. So we don't know what we're going to do when we get to the next creek now, but hopefully we can bump into someone to give us a lift. That drain's looking really appetizing. Ah, oh, the water pushing out of there. We gotta go. We're gonna have to come back. I love this spot. It's nice, eh? It's really good. I actually prefer it to the last river. There's something special about it. I think it's the small mouth, the big system. Oh, yeah. Man cave. Crop slide on the other side there. You reckon there's one on the outside too, eh? Yeah, a little one. It looks like he came up at like. Yeah, at three in the morning. Oh, well, probably. Actually, probably earlier. Probably about four thirty. Oh, that's the bottom. Point seven. All right, we're nearly out, guys. It's going to be a wrap for another episode, I think. Unless we find some cool stuff to do this afternoon. Thanks for coming along for the adventure. It's been an absolute epic time exploring down there at that river system and then sneaking up here into this creek catching that big girl this morning all the jennies there yesterday it's such a shame they weren't big bucks but we learned something from that and we'll take that with us for the rest of our journey um, if you like what you see make sure you subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell tell your mates do all that stuff um, get your merch I'm not wearing it but Dane is wildreaches.com yeah thanks for watching thanks for supporting us Thanks to all the sponsors for, uh, for supporting us too, we really appreciate it. Anything you want to say there, See you next week. See you next week. Bit of behind the scenes stuff guys i just wanted to share this feeling that i get um you guys don't really get to see this because basically you guys see the highlight reel all the fun that we have um but we do we just push ourselves and everything to the limit um like right now it's probably 1 p.m and we've just drive back at the land cruiser um haven't eaten any food this morning except for those little chocolate jelly baby things that we just happened to find a packet of them on the boat so no breakfast we literally ran out of water got the water bag here somewhere i think there's like maybe one cup left in the water bag uh must be in dane's car um literally ran out of water fresh water i've got 30 gopro batteries and i've got one left and the rest of them are dead because i left the charges here left the charges in the bloody 79 series so i had to just charge um, the battery through the GoPro just one at a time and I just kept forgetting to do it. Um, yeah, we're, we're out of food basically except for the fish that we were catching which is still fine but you just, you get back, the feeling that I wanted to share with you is just how overwhelmed you feel when you get back to the Land Cruiser and you know I've got frozen bananas, frozen berries, almond milk and I'm going to make a smoothie with the inverter. Um, you know the freezer's frozen, it's minus 15. Um, the batteries are all good thanks to Battery World Noosa. Like, you just go from one extreme to the other. You go from being out in the out in the sun, way down the coast, just relying on yourself and, um, you know, just living rough basically. To getting back to here, like I'm about to put the rooftop tent up in the shade and just lay down for half an hour and just have a bit of a kip. I'm gonna have a smoothie first. I'm gonna have a shower because there's a big boar here where we're staying. Like. <laughs> Honestly, that's what I wanted to share with you. Just the extremes that we put ourselves into and then come out of it. And this is the other end of the extreme. It's absolutely amazing to get back to camp. Um, yeah, and I know you guys don't really get to see that, so I wanted to share it with you. See you all next week.
Shout out to Tom and Shana, Patrolling Oz. Check them out.